Hey, Snapchat, super quick, Snapstorm today to explain to you why it's called crypto, cryptocurrency. I gotta explain the crypto. Where we left off yesterday was me trying to explain to you to think about cryptocurrencies overall and the concept in three discrete topics. Blockchain is the database where you store all the information. It's called a ledger. Tokens or cryptocurrencies are how you incentivize participation and ICOs is how people raise money. So let me explain why cryptography is so important to the concept of digital money. To do this, you need to understand first that all cryptocurrencies are set up like peer-to-peer -peer networks, computers that are all tied directly to each other. As the name peer-to-peer -peer implies, there's no, nothing in the center. All the computers are just connected directly. You probably already know that this is how Napster worked. This is how BitTorrent works. This is how Skype originally worked. The trade is that I put computer resources into a network. I get something back, like file shared. And what people get from me is use of my computer and bandwidth. In a world where I was taking pictures, DVDs, or CDs and sharing them across the network, there was one really big problem. The problem is if I took one of these digital files and I shared it in multiple places, I couldn't guarantee there was only one copy. So there was digital rights management problem. Obviously, if this is money, you can't have money in two places at one time. It's called the double spend problem. So the innovative approach that digital money takes is using cryptography to solve this problem. That's what I'm gonna explain. The goal of blockchains is, first of all, as I said, to make each digital asset identifiably uniquely through cryptography. The second important idea is that you then create a record of each of these unique assets in a ledger. It's a public ledger. And because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, there's no one in the center controlling this, which is what people mean when they say it's decentralized. And the computers themselves have to agree what a verified transaction is. They form consensus amongst themselves. In the course of my series through this Snapstorm, I'm gonna explain how all these things happen, but I can't do it in one day, so I'm just gonna focus on the basics of cryptography today. The foundational component is that I take an input of any length, I run it through an algorithm, and I produced a fixed length output. This output or random sequence of fixed length numbers is called a hash. You'll hear this term a lot in blockchains and Bitcoin, hash. All a hash is is a long string of data going through an algorithm producing a fixed length output. That's it. What is this input? Well, this input is things like transaction data that you can run through the algorithm. And there are three really important things you need to know about taking data through an algorithm and making a hash. Number one, if I take three separate computers all with the same long transaction data, run it through an algorithm, they will get the exact same hash. This is critical because it means if I take the data with the same algorithm, I can always verify that the data is the same. Number two, if I take data from two computers that are different, even if they only differ by one character, they will always produce different hashes. So if I take two different data sets and run it through an algorithm and it's not the exact same hash, I know the data is not the same. And the third critical thing you need to know is once I have this random hash of fixed length, I can't reverse engineer it and run it through an algorithm to figure out the data. That's critical in that I can make this data anonymous or pseudonymous, and that's incredibly important for security purposes. So I'm gonna finish on one last concept, and tomorrow I'm actually gonna to explain to you what a blockchain is. If you remember that I can take a long string of data and run it through an algorithm and produce a fixed length hash, there's a second thing I can do. If I take Bitcoin transactions, create a hash, I can create a second hash of a different transaction and hash those together to produce another. The important thing about being able to take two hashes and create the hash AB is I can take large data sets and reduce it to something small that can be compared. In blockchain, you'll hear people talk about SHA-256. It just stands for Secure Hash 
algorithm, that's the most commonly used algorithm. So in my example, I took two separate transactions, people transferring Bitcoin from one person to another, and I hashed them together. And while I can hash these into hash AB, I can take a separate set of transactions to CD, and then I can hash those together to what's called a root hash. This root hash gives you a really short data string that can represent all of the underlying data. This is called a Merkle tree. And this is precisely how I can take thousands of transactions in Bitcoin, create a single hash, and compare it to everybody else in the network. And if I don't stop there, I'm going to confuse the hell out of you. But tomorrow I'm going to tell you how that Merkle tree can be used to form a blockchain.